jumping right into it. Game number three of the grand finals here. Tassadar has been banned on the side of LFM. All right, time for that Leoric ban. Uh, Dahaka being hovered here. Uh, I, I like it a lot. You know, we already talked about Global Sky Temple, another one uh, that, that really excels on that. Uh, so we'll see uh, if we see the early Falstad play or whether we're going to go into Malfurion or the early Arthas pickup, which has been popular tonight, or Zarya. It's fun. Um, we, we have a lot of variety with the Warriors. I wonder how much of that is due to... You know, the targeted impact they did with the, the balance changes in this patch. I mean, I'd imagine most of it, but Greymane Lucio. Opting for Lucio over Malfurion when available. Another thing that we're seeing uh, more and more of, which is... Uh, it's really cool. Lucio is just such a, a different kind of support. So... We've seen it in a couple of different... We saw it at the Eastern Clash. We kind of saw this setup that basically relied on Lucio and Greymane and basically a full dive comp, and it was very hard to pull the trigger and finding opportunities to pull the trigger. Um, with an early Lucio Greymane, that kind of lends towards what they might be trying to accomplish. Uh, so their late pickups could be following suit. So... Uh, you kind of have to be weary of that in the draft. Uh, that's why Falstad would not be a bad pickup at all. Uh, if they try to dive, you know, break the sound barrier and then just mighty gust them away. Uh, you know, there's a lot of opportunities. Uh, Zarya could, yeah, there's the Falstad pickup. I like that a lot. Arthas does good for engagement. Uh, Zarya has expulsion zone. And if she opts to go feel the heat, there's a lot of really good things. Yeah, a lot of control, a lot of options. Expulsion, Gust, you name it, they have it. Now we're going to the second band phase. You know, Malph has been let through, and they're still not even worried about banning him. That's so interesting to me. I mean... Engaging into a Li Ming, maybe that's something they're trying to make sure they don't have to do, especially a Li Ming with Calamity that can get resets on a hard engaged team. Um, that could be something. ETC going to be the ban. If they're looking to engage, if Tyrael might be an option, uh, we might see a Murden pick up here. If I see a Leoric pick up at this point, I'm not even going to be surprised anymore. It's true. After this series. I mean, you got to be thinking if you're going full dive comp, I mean, you, you basically would have shown your cards early at this point. So you kind of got to have a little bit more flexibility in your draft. Uh, you know, Vala got let through, but we don't we haven't really been seeing a lot of Vala Greymane. Um, well, Mura Leo, man, Uncle Leo. I mean, the Muradin pickup definitely suits the play style. Uh, my, I think we saw a Skullcracker build earlier. We did, That uh, yes. might be a thing again. But Leoric is just... People love him. Uh, versus Artho, yeah. Speaking of Artho, I saw Artho on streaming here as yesterday. Yeah, we were kind of uh, debating on whether he would make his way back, and we hypothesized some teams and stuff. I um, I heard at the start of the season that he was going to try to compete uh, at the the split right after the midseason. So we'll see. I mean, see. I probably could go more into depth than that, but... Yeah. I mean, I who knows? It, like, right? It, like you said, what teams would be willing or interested in, in grabbing him? Mount Furion does get picked up. Super standard last pick here with a Vala. Uh, giving us another one of those very early pressure compositions. The, the Zarya, Mouth, 
Avala, a three man in one lane, putting on as much DPS as possible, getting an early wall. Sky Temple, a very important thing. So, will it be enough? I, I mean, <laughs> we've already seen Triple Warrior. I've seen Chromie into drafts that haven't really made sense. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we just see an Abather pick up here. Uh, contribute, make sure you don't fall behind on experience. Uh, basically empower the Grey Main. Uh, there, there's so much they can do. I mean, even uh, Lunara at this point. Uh, yeah, you've got Zarya. Yeah, you've got Malfurion who has great sustain, but uh, Lunara does really well on a front line if you're trying to get that slow, trying to get that damage in. There's just, there it is. I like I like the Lunara pickup probably over just about anything else they could have grabbed. It's so funny the impact Asia's influence can have on the game. I'm happy for it. I mean, I agree. Lunara is a super, super cool hero. I, I think that again, heroes like Arthas. Um, no hard engaged you. No hard engage, okay? Arthas has to physically walk in and hope to hit that route, okay? And Someone needs to you, buy him a car. Somebody needs to buy him a, a race car because Lunara just sits there and says, look, you want to walk in? Let me hit W, and it slows you because I've already auto-attacked you once. Yes, you might have block, but um, it, it, it's just... Oh, man. It, it, it's It's tough. It's super tough to, to be as Arthas, and a Lunara pickup is a huge Arthas counter. So is Leoric, and I yep. know that there's some questions about, like, oh, yeah, well, is he? Sometimes it depends on skill, okay? But I, I really just feel that they're going to have a hard time engaging, and their hardest engagement will be if Falstad is able to fly over and get a gust. I mean, my favorite, my favorite thing to point out with uh, Arthas versus Leoric, just baseline, is... Arthas is a hero that wants to stick on you. Leoric literally gets health back if you're sticking on him via Drain Hope. And uh, you see even the additional range here. We actually saw this build last game too, the just full-on Drain Hope style. It's to be against the Arthas. Um, not going to be a lone tank. He's really just trying to be that, that lane matchup. Uh, looks like Leo is going to be going to the bottom versus Falstead for the moment, which should be expected. And it's good to point out that there is a global disparity. Just, uh, just false end. These three have not shown yet, um, because they do want to put the pressure on the top lane. And now they're walking forward with the minion wave to commence their assault. Well, we've uh, seen this multiple times. This three-man composition of Vala, Zarya, and basically any support can be pretty deadly. Um, they might have a little bit more trouble with Lunara poking back at them, though. That's true. Poison damage is tough. I mean, uh, Zarya shields only last so long, and poison damage can uh, out can last longer in terms of duration. Uh, so there is that. I think Arthas might be in trouble here. Good roots there from Malfurion, just to make sure there's a safe retreat. The rotation from House speed boosting the team back into the lane. Um, I don't know if they were looking to try to find someone off guard, but that's a, it's what, a 16 second cooldown on the E? 50. What, which, which ability? Uh, Lucio's E. Amp it up. Yeah, 15. Well, Falstad left at the bottom. Uh, he does have that global, so if it needs to come up, basically if you try and do an even trade, um, and then Leoric goes up and then he comes back down. You can just fly up and out-rotate. Um, it's one of those things to where sometimes you try and take the top and then force them middle and then you rotate and collapse down on top of them. Um, but Falstad definitely wins out a lot in this trade in particular. Battery uh, going to be able to walk away from that fight. Like a battery just kind of like AFK'd on that point because Malph and Zarya weren't attacking. He was like, I'm just going to deny you any channel for a moment, which is why you see... The top shrine or the top temple is much further along, uh, but the rest of this mid temple should end up going to LFM regardless, and the game will continue being very even. Uh, one big difference that you know we have in this game is the fact that Zarya Vala haven't done a lot of early game damage. 
versus this composition compared to the previous games. Drayden has flown up, but the Dwarf Toss is there in time to get Murden out of harm's way. And this Temple will finish with shots. Falsted now in the top. My temple's power. And the Giants have begun being picked up. Yep, it allows you to basically, and we actually see a camp being started early on the right. So if you're having your globals, the reason why you see that instant fly up, if you guys aren't as familiar, if you're playing a global in this game, always have your global bottom so that the first two temples are going to be in the top. If you're needed, you fly up. You take advantage of the global. Next temple is at the very bottom. Take advantage of that global by keeping false set on the top and allowing your four man to do things in the bottom and mid lane. So you can see more value out of that as nobody has responded to false set top that camp is now being picked up a little bit early, uh, which means they might have a tough defense if uh, the camp at the top left is timed appropriately by LFO. Well, Homicidal gets a, some good damage in. That Drain Hope uh, really working out for him to be able to maintain a forward position and deny some of the damage onto the Knights. As a result, the Knights will get some damage onto that four. Oh, with Arthas from hitting up, not so much. I received Murden still middle, and uh, you know, sometimes you can stagger. So if you opt to go in early night camp, you can grab your Siege Giants after and stagger them so that you force a response top and then push in the bottom. They did not do that, so they're basically playing into a stalemate. So in the long run, reasonably, LFM should win out here as uh, you're going to see that camp pick up. We see a mule pick up. Yeah. No hard. I was gonna say no hard CC, but I mean Muradin it's is, is really the only one. I guess that's double warrior gonna get the kill here on Falstad. Drated goes down, trying to defend this top fort. The mule has been destroyed, and homicidal will he opt to push this lane out to confirm this top fort? Looks like it, since they have Falstad down for a moment. No real threat of shrine uh, deficiency in terms of their presence. The worst thing is they did not finish that camp. Yeah, I'm sitting here saying in the long run they should win this, but they prioritized that little bit of fort that they had left over potentially much, much more. So that's a big misplay, I think, here early on. I, I'm actually a little bit surprised. Falstead will fly down. Greymane is rooted. Should make it out of there. Battery is stuck in there as well. He's going to dwarf toss out. Leoric up at the top, but I, I can't help but think that LFM just made a big mistake. Well, LFM will get a lot of shots here. The wall still holding strong. No mule on the side of even in death. They do have Leo on his way, but he's still a ways off. Much closer to level 10, they are. And Leo is around the bend, looking to tap the well and move on into this fight where they will have control. Murden already getting those shots for his team. Well, uh, level 10 will be obtained here by Even in Death, and LFM looking to concede uh, that. Falstad rotating back to the top to basically clear up the lane uh, that he would have potentially been at uh, for a while, uh, but level 10 is going to potentially force a boss engagement, I believe. Wow, okay. That's... A uh, quick cleanup of that boss. I mean, the 10 advantage makes it pretty darn safe to do that. Um, don't have to worry about things like Mighty Gust. They did go for Curse Bullet. Thornwood Vines this game with Avatar, and Tomb, and uh, the Sound Barrier. Boss has to worry about a mule healing it up. Uh, never mind. <laughs> mule died. Mule died, and here comes Foss to have the Mighty Gust in. There's the lack of engagement being made up for us. Twilight Dream used as well. How going to be the first to fall? Lucio goes down. Frozen X, the next to go. Lutano just trying to do anything he can to ward them off. But that is a perfect fly-in, followed up with a Twilight Dream, and that is how it's done. Yeah, that was that was sexy. To put it bluntly, I mean, there was, you saw Lucio like, do this little little ribbit hop into the air to try to cast sound barrier but twilight dream just lasted too long wasn't able to get it off if he was uh able to sound barrier maybe that wasn't a complete uh domination there in favor of lfm but nice play with the faucet twilight 
They gave up the boss. They gave up an early 10, but they're going to make up for it with that team fight win. Uh, they grabbed the, they cleared the Bruiser camp. I think Leoric is uh, going to fall, pushed up a little bit too far there, but now they can make a play on this. They can grab this camp and they can hold top and really get good push, or they can try and defend both. Either way, uh, LFM uh, making up for a little bit of a mistake and trying to make up for it in the long run. Well, it looks like we're going to have even in death focus on the lower portion of the battleground. You know, just giving up top. False head can go onto the top shrine on his own. Bit of a skirmish here as Lutano showing himself in the mid. Uh, curse bullet thrown out onto Lutano, but that's easily healed up. Only a 30 second cooldown. It's not the biggest of deals, but that last fort did just go down to battery holding the bottom uh, temple. Tom Temple still has not even been whispered to. Well, you've got camps pushing uh, for both teams in top and bottom, so uh, one of these teams is going to have to force a response. As you can see, uh, backing out here is LFM, while Falstad finally rotates to that top temple uh, to get that started. These giants, you just mentioned them. Uh, really just keeping this pushed and not really going to do a whole lot of damage themselves. The last few shots nearly got a tower, but not quite. The rest of the red team has nearly made their ascent into the top lane. Where they have the 13 advantage for a moment, but beyond that, they're being they're being cautious on moving on in. As Homicidal and Battery take their place, forcing out a good into good swirl onto BBJ, just not enough follow-up behind that. Right. Even in death, basically forcing them off the point, but 13 for both teams. They're going to look to re-engage here. Again, you got to look out for that false stat gust always as Lutano continuing to push and isolate it. There is Lucio again, Jake. Yeah, Sound Barrier is not very good if you can't cast it. <laughs> the Twilight Dream of the Expulsion Zone makes that a little bit difficult. I don't know. I, you've really got to question the positioning. Uh, uh, yeah. That time, the last one, you can blame the gust. That one was just posturing. I would agree. I mean, maybe hard style made him feel like you know he's is a little bit safer than he was. Um, good Twilight, regardless. Like if you if if all you're killing is the support with Twilight Dream, that's still super value because you win the fight against the Lucio. He's really all about that. Um, you know, turning the tide of the battle with a a big. Uh, sound barrier in the mid midst of it, but uh, we do see this position. They want their giants. These giants on the left side also available. Potential invade coming through here. Moonfire scouts the bush. They got the drone, and they're looking to drop on in. Not just a moment too late. Yeah, good stun there. It's like, nope, uh, not going to happen this time. Leoric showing up at the top, and uh, luckily for them, they were able to obtain that uh, quick enough. 14 to 14 but two forts still stand on the side of even and death, despite the fact that we have a mule on the side of LFM. That's true, but mule is something that can really be insane in the late game. And I mean, I, I agree that it's definitely should be something you seek to get value all game long. Um, it gives you this, this kind of added hope to survive in moments like where, where otherwise you would you just be you just be done so we'll see still can't count that talent out right now both teams very close to 16 false dead continuing to soak in the top lane boss is up but i think our last yeah i was gonna say our last temple phase was top bottom uh this time it's gonna be top mid you still have to worry about the threat there uh, obviously boss control. Uh, when you talk about it, you have Expulsion Zone plus Mighty Gust on the side of LFM. So if it comes down to a fight uh, that becomes basically a standoff, uh, look for that to potentially win out. Uh, again, no pre-cleanse available. Uh, sometimes you will cleanse somebody to keep them on top of the point, but no cleanse uh, will be contributing to that. Howling Blast onto Frozen X, Expulsion Zone behind him, the Twilight Dream. Lock him in place and eliminate his wolfy face. Trying to turn this onto Arthas army that it has been summoned. So much self-sustain as a result and just can't find that opening. Soy very low, but Mouth has the big heals. And although Zarya is locked into this entomb, they just do not have uh, the body without Graeming to deal with it. Ish no longer has those, those zombies 
to the putting some good pressure on him, but it's still a 4v5 in favor of LFM. Yeah, uh, that's good a start as you can ask for right there. Arthas has gone back to tap well, so right now it's currently a four on four. He should be here momentarily as BBG, BBJ takes a little bit of damage. BBGBs. False ad! BBGBs. No Twilight available this time, but both of the frontline heroes, once again, Lucia just kind of kind of getting pooped on. Um, didn't have a whole lot he could offer for his team. Now he's losing, though. Wow. <laughs> That's not necessarily a fight if you're even in death that you had to take or force or anything. Um, you have structure advantage. If you trade temples, you're still winning the game. Uh, but um, Greymane did get caught out, so... I'm curious if they're... They're going to make a play on the boss, which right now looks great because Malfurion and Vala are both top, whereas they should already be moving down and leaving Falstad up. You heal up Falstad, you give him mana, you give him all that stuff, and then you rotate down. Um... Instead, this is a free boss for even a death. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're down one full level. And the top temple will get these these last few keeps. So, I mean, it's going to give them a lot of XP. Just looking at the total XP in this game, it's 62k to 55k. So, a good Leoric lead. Has Leoric has to back, else that top keep is gone. That's true. Uh, that, that's, that's basically their only threat. They have to have somebody defend that, else they're going for a kill shot here. Uh, Leoric is still hanging out in the bottom lane. I have no idea why. He needs to get to the top lane and quick. Um, uh, he's on his way. Good split option uh, for even in depth to just, you know, use the boss as a distraction. Put some good pressure onto the mid wall. Um, and they are in full on retreat mode. Leo. Can he hold on to this for his team? Shouldn't die, but it's going to take a lot of damage. Yeah, and again, your structures are your lifeline there, so uh, it's good for them to be back, defend that, keep that alive. The boss obviously not getting a ton of value. Uh, There's only a 14-minute boss. The siege can't pick up, especially because there's four on five. Cursed bullet ripping through Ishbu, the expulsion zone. Leoric starting to make his way down. This is an invade that's going a little bit awry. Just going to concede it. Favorable uh, for even in death, the uh, Curse Bullet for Expulsion Zone didn't manage to get Ish to preemptively cast that Army of the Dead. Probably what they were looking for there. Not really a likely situation to get the kill on an Arthas in that, that type of moment, especially without Leo. Um, so good on Ish on holding that talent. A lot of damage this time. Hecarim will end up going down. That's the power of Curse Bullet. Such a short cooldown. Yeah, you hear it, and you know that something's. if it hits, then it hurts. And, well, it's uh, the next temple phase, and there's really nothing else on the map right now that Elephant can do other than soak. Uh, they are really close to 20. I think if they get the mid wave plus this bottom wave, they can hit 20. I don't think they can posture up onto the temple uh, 4v5 of 20, but it's definitely something they can uh, start to look for long term. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, um, it's, it's a tough moment where you just kind of got to sit back, but 20 is almost here. Things will be evened up. We saw the damage they put in on this, so the mule doing its darndest to heal these structures up, but oh no. Mule, go home, you're drunk. It's not helpful. If I go here? Someone's got to give that mule roller skates. He's going to get a bit of healing done on that mid keep, and the rotation coming on up. Zarya just now respawning. Will take a moment to get there. Unfortunately, not really going to be able to contest this middle shrine all that effectively. 20's good. They're... Why are they giving that up? It's I, 4v5, and I, they had like two more, two more seconds. Maybe they, I don't know. Just afraid of the Falstad, uh, you know, flyover, gust, and then Zarya rolls into the, the tail end of it, possibly. Just not wanting to take the risk without 20. They, they now did not secure mid keep. That's a really uh, big deal when this and guy is, now is there. Yeah. That, uh, why? Okay, Zarya still had two seconds on her death timer. She doesn't have a global. 
And so now they do not confirm the keep. Mule will heal that back up, and they just lost a big advantage because this threat of 20, 4v5, forced them off that. And they're and feeling the pressure. They're looking to make a reckless move to push in towards mid. This is kind of what LFM wants. Um, it's They don't have the most poke towards this, right? Grayman can throw Gilman cocktails. Lunara can, I think they can think maybe. Lunara, but even then, the mule has healed it up so much that you can't even poke it down. Yeah. 20 to 20. Gonna be a much tankier Leo with this spectral at 20. And that's that's very big for him. But this mule, second one drops, or third one drops. Boss timer, 40 seconds. And the next temple phase could determine the game depending on where it's at or where they're at. And then obviously uh, based around the fact that, yeah, this is it. This is the, the worst case scenario if you don't have a global. Mm -hmm. Is that you now are going to have top threatened due to Falstad. And Falstad alone can control the top lane, can control the temple. The bottom temple can be contested. And if you choose not to take one or the other, then the boss can get taken. It's it's a weird back and forth. And without a global, it's scary. And speaking of without a global, right. he, he knows he has to fly. He, okay, he yeah. is out of there. He saw Lucio. And, and they're he, already posturing on the boss. This is it. They If they do not rotate down right now, this could potentially be game. You can, at this point, have one. Yeah, they're coming down, but this might be a little bit too late. Scouting drone reveals homicidal stepping in. As they see him back away, they, they re-engage. Now, they did see the health bars. Battery do could work off if needed. Uh, expulsion zone drops in on the point. Twilight Dream is in there in the gust. Right away, Homicidal will go down. Battery with the Avatar in the front trying to stay alive to the best of his ability. Did not get any benefit from that sound barrier that was used on the back side of the fight. The boss is now marching down, and we're talking about Global from Falstead to go take the top shrine in the bottom temple here, scooped up from Arthas. Beautiful play. Yeah, and that middle keep still standing. And now you're risking potentially two keeps going down here. Falstad has epic mount, so he can basically come back down uh, very, very soon. Uh, Battery is going to come up here to try and disrupt that. Uh, this is actually kind of scary for Drayda to be involved in. Falstad in trouble. <laughs> it's not enough to save the top keep, though. They're going to lose two keeps. So that right there, that play alone, the, the double temple phase with the boss available. And yeah, like I said, I called it like 10 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago. The fact that you have Falstad and Zarya, you have infinite boss control. So that's uh, you give up two keeps in the process by by one or and barely walking away. Yeah, just gets a little bit of self healing for the last few shots. How's going to heal him up? The the final shots are still here. Um, so is Mule. Yeah. Jake feels bad, man. Mule is a good talent uh, in these situations. I mean, cleanse was not a necessity versus Stormbolt. It's 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 a nice to have, um, but both of their assassins do have a mobility option, vault and, and barrel roll. Zarya will slip into the bottom, grab the last few shots, but that, that does confirm this is a 4 5 for a moment. Surprise, they're not being a little bit more aggressive in that, that uh, slight window where they did have the opportunity. Um, yeah, knowing that that was being channeled, I, I feel they needed a posture up. There's no, I don't know. This is bad. Yeah, it's, it, not it's, good. it's almost like they're getting desperate, and they're going to have to be. Epic Mount Falstad will put so much pressure on this. On, on the that's other that's what they're afraid of. They're afraid of getting gusted. And Thornwood Vine is doing, it's, it's, it's working its little heart off. A good Entomb on two. The gust has to be used. Now they don't have to worry about it. Is that enough for them to be able to turn this around? Battery, huge DPS being thrown his way. Dwarf tossing on out. Still has Avatar if needed. No shrine on the table, but catapults will continue pushing on bottom. Piling up three in the lane right now, halfway across the map. Yeah, I mean, at what point do you just say, all right, let this go, and then just send false that bottom and threaten their corn? I mean, you can do that in about five to 10 seconds. Yeah. You just send him down there, give up this keep, and then just threaten their corn. You can Watch for the expulsion zone behind this. 
Expulsion Zone is beautiful, getting the Twilight Dream on Homicidal. That's Leo, though. If you lose someone, that's who you want to lose. But time is up. They lost the hero. The catapults are on their core, and the mule will do its worst. Yeah, they, they have to hearth right now. They have to find a way to hearth, and the, the hearth has to be interrupted right now. Although Falstad might actually be posturing. The thing is, they can play. All right now, instead of this, they can now just play the temple game. Leoric will be up, and basically they're going to have to defend a couple of waves, and then they're going to have to take a fight. If they do not take a fight, they will lose this game, and it'll look just like the game we had earlier on Sky Zone. It's going to be 22 to 23 by the looks of it at this point. That stat advantage is something to consider for sure. Um, but, I mean, Falstad just constantly threatening to be wherever he's not supposed to be. Never know what he's going to do. The global power that they have to have in the back of their mind. Good damage on Ish. Falset flies up to the top. Gets a gust. Expulsion zone down. Frozen X gets eliminated. That is 90% of this team's damage, Jay Howe. That is just huge, huge damage. Lutano being threatened a little bit on the back by Drada, but the slow is there. It's not going to matter as Leoric and Lunara are both down. How somehow able to walk away with by riding the walls. But it's four members down. And Jake, we are going to be looking at a... GG as LFM taking the finals here in cup number four. Really well played. I got to give a huge congratulations, but it's not like UTA uh, went down for free. Even in death, worked really hard, took them out in the semifinals. But LFM reigned supreme here in the fourth cup of the HGC Open Division. Obviously, uh, I'm going to left the game. Oh no, really? I didn't even see. <laughs> <laughs> it's bedtime. Um, don't say anything in which <laughs> chat. <laughs> My temple. GG. And you can't see it. This observer chat. Oh. Well played. LFM earning themselves a big victory. Top prize here. And of course,